Welcome, everyone. This is entitled New Tools to Help Learn God's Truth Using the JWO Channel. And uh, this is going to be an exciting 2024, and I'm trying to make this uh, even a better experience, use, more useful experience, a more educational experience going forward. So let me just show you a couple of exciting things that are happening. Uh, the first thing I'm going to show you is the descriptions to each video is going to have a standard uh, link to a variety of different things. And let me show you what that will look like. Okay, so let's see what's going to change. If you looked at a typical episode, you'd see uh, the content and you know what it is about. And then after you watched it, you might want to do more research on what this context was. It says it's number 43 of, of Paul's Contradictions of Jesus. And it's the second, I call it a double whammy, of a contradiction of both Jesus and Yahweh. So you want to find out about the double whammies, maybe, and you want to find out uh, what are all the other contradictions and where those episodes are. So I'm going to show you how you might do that. And we've created a new uh, uh, section, or I've pasted in a uh, link to the Airtable account that I have. And it's it operates just like a secure website online, and it's uh, run by a top company that is, this is used by almost all the Fortune 500 companies. And uh, it is free at a very a certain level. If you just wanted to use it in your own personal life, I think you'll see it's so interesting and you'll get used to it. Uh, and uh, But it's not even expensive to run it for a year and pay a fee, and then you get up to two gigabytes of space on, their, uh, on each Airtable database. And so you'll see I have two gigabytes of database for all the public domain books that I'm going to show you in a second uh, on, an, on another link, this one down here. But the first link is the link to all the videos on the channel. And you want to find out about contradictions of Yahweh. You want to find about contradictions of, of Jesus by Paul. So how would you do that? You're going to click this button here, and it's going to lead you to 900 videos sorted in categories, 116 categories, that you can then view. So the, you look it up by category, or you can just do word search to look at the words inside of a video. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so when you press the link to the 900, or almost 900, uh, well, there's 872 records so far. Hopefully, I'm adding one record a day, so it's going to keep growing. And this this uh, view keeps expanding as things are added, so you you don't have to have a new if you store, you can't save this link. It will always stay the same. At least that's the plan. And uh, it will always keep updating with whatever the view changes where I've added new episodes. So it always keeps updated. It's always current. So now we were talking about how would you look up contradictions between Jesus and Paul? Well, let's take a look. So first of all, you can see there's groups and you can scroll down, see bio of Paul, uh, canon issues, Canon and the corruptions inside the New Testament, Canon, the apostasy of Paul, the apostasy series, uh, uh, Canon, Paul cannot meet the Canon test, uh, contradictions of Jesus by Paul. So actually just scrolling, I found it, but I want to show you how you would find it if you didn't scroll. So you see all these contradictions. These are all episodes of that. And here are the contradictions of Yahweh by Paul. We now have quite a lot. Uh, I think we're, where are we up to now? Anyway, it's, uh, it's several, uh, one, three, two, uh, and three. I think uh, I think I have a duplicate number there, so I have to fix that. But anyway, uh, so here's the um, and the other thing you get to see you get to see what series it's part of. So every episode I I give a series or I try to if they're not one off uh, episodes. So you see the series. You might remember it that way, so you can search on that. Uh, but the search goes universal. So whatever you type in, it's going to find it in any col column. So over here on the right, you see where it has a search um, circle or uh, what is that? My, uh, a uh, magnifying glass. And you go there. And I see when I highlight it, it says control F view. See, uh, hold on. Uh, anyway, it's it's literally pressing for you. Control F. Ah, it's there for a second. So when you hit that, it brings up a view and says find in view. So let's just say you just want to look up contradictions. Okay, so you go contradictions. Okay, so it's just a few letters and you're already there. You It'll jump to where you want to go. And then you might want to actually search on something uh, different. So let's say uh, 
let's say eat meeting eating meat sacrifice idols. Jesus says you can't do it in Matthew in uh, Revelation chapter two, but Paul says in First Corinthians eight and ten you can eat meat sacrifice idols. So they're completely at odds with each other. So you want to see all the videos we did on eating meat sacrifice idols to idols because there's many different topics. Now there's five different episodes. See, you just go click through them, and then you go down. Okay, so here's a uh, contradictions thirty four to thirty six. Paul excludes eating uh, with sinning brothers, but Christ's lost sheep parable is opposite. And Paul also contradicts Jesus' refutations of the Pharisees, same rule as Paul's. Now, why did that happen? So the word eating was in there. <laughs> eating is there. So Paul excludes eating with sinning, sinners. So G remember, Jesus is dealing with Pharisees who keep, see, keep saying you're not supposed to eat with sinners. And what does Paul teach? <laughs> he teaches... Uh, you can eat you you must not eat with sinners that's a, a complete opposite of each other and nobody I, you know it it's just amazing if you keep looking and looking you keep finding more every day so that's just another one but uh then you can see it's 36 minutes and then if you want to start it up it's right there and it's episode number 34 which it, this is part of so see that and it's part of the series contradictions of paul uh now let's say you want to look up something else let's say you want to look up uh contradictions of yahweh or well, I usually abbreviate Yahweh W H Y H, okay? Uh just to keep save space actually. Uh so uh here's here's um a double whammy. Uh Paul in Romans four verses four to five contradicts both Yes Jesus or Yeshua and Yahweh on justification of ungodly. Uh this is number forty three of contradictions. Yeah, Paul says uh, God justifies the ungodly. And God says, I, I never justified the ungodly. I mean, so you have to repent from sin, not just repent about believing in facts about Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, but actually have sorrow about what you've done wrong and turn. Jesus actually says that in Luke, right? So you want to see all these things. You just have to type in the right search terms and it will come up. So this is, uh, uh, and again, it's 872 records and it's instantaneous. So everything here can be found. You want to find out something about Ebionites, for example. Uh, let's, let's do that. I'm just going to try that for a minute because i think we as christians need to get back to our earlier church and understand what they believe because they should be the most orthodox and the most uh, in terms of what christ would have expected they were his followers <laughs> so the 12 apostles and and the people that succeeded them too and they were called every nights for over 300 years until there was persecution of them by the constantinian state and all those people uh, so let's take a look here. So we have the first one about answering Kel on Ebionites. Uh, Habakkuk is uh, Habakkuk and Paul series. Episode number one. Did Paul know the Ebionites thought Habakkuk 2 verse 4 applied to him? Okay. So we we saw, if you watched some of the episodes, that there's the spouter of lies and the Habakkuk pesher at the Dead Sea Scrolls, which dates from 50 AD, not in the pre, uh, pre-fall Jerusalem. Uh, they, the scholars under the catholic domination gave us this impression that there was no nothing from close in time to the temple's fall and that misled us what we now know the temple fall is is the marker of why all the works that you see at the dead sea were actually part of the original library at the temple and that's why it's so varied and there's so many there's so many different sects of different viewpoints and that's why there's so many copies of the bibles because why not store everything there but when the Romans are sieging. They got to take all that and put it down the Herod's tunnel, tunnel, and there it goes, goes all the way down in Qumran. That's where the Herod's tunnel under the temple, the secret tunnel, goes all the way to Qumran, goes all the way to Dead Sea, and that's why they put them in caves to preserve them. But everyone died. A million people died in the, in the Temple Mount that day, or that siege, and uh, that meant uh, there was no one to pick them up, no one to go get the stuff. They were all dead. So that is the uh, truth. That's what Gold found, and now that's what the Israel uh, uh, University experts have also confirmed so we had a completely wrong impression this was Essenes and their sex at Qumran no it was a clay plate factory misunderstood to be uh, uh, a monk monks uh, eating area that and again this is all all right but anyway so you want to study all that and everything I just said clay plate factory you can look that up here too I'm sure there's an article on it so that's how this is going to work. And I think you'll find that very useful anytime you want to research just independently of the video that you just watched. You might want to re watch, some, look at something else. You can jump off and study some new stuff that you, you haven't heard before. Okay.
All right, so let's go back to the description that's underneath every episode and from now on. And I'm trying to go back and put them all, put these links in every video that we've ever done. It's going to take a while to go through 846 videos, but I'm going to try. I've done about 10 so far. And uh, so this is a uh, subtopic here. It's called Online Search Tools We Host. We post books of or URLs for public domain books published from 1928 or earlier at this URL. So when you do 1928 as your cutoff, you're guaranteed under the law that applied at that time under copyright that these works now from 1928 and in the past are all in public domain. As the dates move forward every year, this is going to have another year, and it'll be 1929 next year, excuse me, 29 next year, and the year after that, 1930, will be the cutoff dates. So I keep track of all those things in a database. That I know exactly what year the books were written, and, and I know when they move into pu public domain, and I'll keep adding to the public domain list that I have. And you'll see I have over 76 public domain books that I've made uploads into my uh, Airtable ebook uh, ebook database. And so that's what you're going to be able to access and download the PDFs yourself. And some of them are amazingly important books in history. Uh, and I'll just review some of them when I pull this up. So I'm going to now click this button and I'll show you what you would see and how you would use it. Okay. So this will show up in your web browser. Again, it's a secure web, web uh, hosting service and uh, again, managed for the top companies in the country. So this is you will never have you should never have a problem with any security here at all anyway so uh you'll see here the name of the books are over here again this is all text searchable and how many books do we have actually we have 79 and i've added some broad issues in there and uh there's a pdf here you'll see the author's name let's say you only knew bauer and you want to see all the books by bauer and so bauer is not by author is it it is not by author right uh because it's by what by the broad issues. So the broad issues are the categories you want. I, I want to see, you know, I want to find something. I want to go by categories. So uh, now, just, but it, that's what's beautiful about search. So you want to look up Bauer's name. Let's see, do we have more than one Bauer? No, we, I think we only have, no, we have four Bauer's. Let's see what we got. We've got uh, Christian Ferdinand Bauer down here in 1878. And uh, he's talking about the Ebionites. And let's see if we got anything else. Okay, so that's all about Ebionites. And so the word Ebionites is obviously inside the book here and searching through that. Uh, the books are all OCR'd. I've tried to do that for everybody. So uh, now, incidentally, there's an online link to books. And so in many cases, uh, you need to go to a, a books.google, for example. I, you can download the book uh, yourself from books.google.com. I've, up, I've downloaded it and then uploaded it here. So it's not le a legal issue. It's just simply you can find these books there. And here's another one where it's where the link goes to books.google.com. And uh, here's one, uh, Raina Valera. It's at ebible.org, 1909 work. It's clearly not copyrighted anymore in, in U.S. distribution. So those are the uh, things. And then you can look over here and see the, uh, the distribution of topics. There's Bible commentaries, Matthew, John, Luke. Uh, the Bengal cognomen, people know that. Apostolic Constitution, the Apocalypse of Peter, uh, two of those, incidentally, M.R. James, 1924, 1892. Uh, and then we have, uh, we, we, I include, <laughs> I include everybody here. It's, I'm not, this is not a distinction of uh, what I agree with or don't agree with. You have to have every point of view in, an, in a bibliography. You have to read a lot of things. Maybe you don't agree with everything. Uh, the anti-Nicene works here, Cyprian M. Caius, Philip Shaft, 1885. So I'm going to keep growing this because I actually have a lot more books that I've stored and never uploaded here. It takes time, and I didn't always have this ebook database. In fact, I, I, I think I was collecting books from Google.com for over at least 10 or 15 years before I got this database. So this is kind of a, the latest stuff. But as I do it, I keep adding the year, and then I know the cutoff date is 1928 currently, and that would end up. I, I sort this and make sure all these dates are, are see, 1926. Nothing will be after 1928. It'll be 1928 or earlier at currently. And then that changes by one year every year as we move forward. All right. So that's what you can do. And then again, I just, maybe I shouldn't make one more example of this. Uh, let's say you want to see, uh, yeah, uh, you know, maybe uh, you've been tra tracking the episodes where I told you about uh, Bentham. Bentham. He wrote a book, and that book is called Not Paul, But Jesus. 
And Jeremy Bentham is a famous uh, author, uh, politician, uh, legal mind. Uh, he was a very eclectic human being. And he bravely, with no idea, you know, the, he knew he was going to get a lot of hostility if it came out, but he, he bravely did a complete thorough analysis and, uh, and shows out of a great love for Jesus, even though he's my, kind of, you would say, uh, an Episcopalian type person, you know, very, uh, you wouldn't expect they would have that devotion to Jesus. And then he's, he's showing you all the uh, problems with Paul and why uh, he thinks that basically Paul robbed the glory from Jesus and took it for himself. And that's really amazing. And that's in 1820. What year did he write that book? 1823. And this is, this is, uh, I think the edition, the first edition, I think was just a few years earlier. So this is the second edition of that work. And it still, at that time was under his pseudonym of Gamaliel Smith. Later books uh, would have his, his name right on the book after he died, I guess. So uh, these are, this is a, a treasure trove of, of wonderful things. Uh, let me just give you another examples, which you might see here. Here's Belanger's book. I have a commentary going on that. You've, some of you might've liked that. Uh, you'll anyone who's interested in uh, the Apocalypse of Peter, uh, the Apostolic Constitutions. Um, uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, uh, expository thoughts. Oh, R. Uh, C. Ryle. I mean, he, there are uh, audio tapes or audio books made from this very book here, and it's a beautiful commentary on the Gospel of Matthew. Very well done. So you could just uh, read it instead of <laughs> listening to it if you wanted to you have marvin vincent's uh word studies from 1905 vincent is a hero of mine because he's the one who first enlightened me about what paul said in galatians chapter 4 when he said we can beggarly elements well that doesn't really tell you what it is elements in that situation in greek thought and also in the jubilees i just showed you recently in an episode the jubilees was written by a pharisees they believe that the uh, elemental spirits that uh, there are angels that control wind, fire, and water, whatever, they're inferior to the superior angels of the presence and some other high level angel. And these are the inferior angels. And, G and Paul is saying, according to Vincent, we can beg the elemental celestial beings, the angels who gave the law. And that's an important real, uh, statement because. When Paul says in Galatians 3, uh, 19, I think it is 19, that the law, the Torah, was given by angels through a mediator, you're not sure. Is that a negative? It's clearly not Yahweh anymore giving the law. That's a bad thing because that's not true. In the Bible, it's clear. It's in Exodus 20, uh, four times. Yahweh is the one speaking, but Paul is contradicting that. But not only that, is it is it negative? Are we supposed to construe anything? Well, to have Marvin Vincent help you, You've got a gold mine because this guy's going to tell you the truth. He's not going to hide it. And he's going to tell you when you read chapter four, verse nine, nine, Paul is now referring back to those weak, those angels that gave the law. And now he's calling them weak and beggarly elemental celestial beings. That's important. So you can find this treasure, a work from 1905, top expert. Uh, and then you can find commentaries and uh, very good commentary on Luke, Godet, you can read my favorite Bible. I've told people, say, everybody asks me, what's the best Bible to read? The If you can read it, it's the 1909. Uh, I would recommend that. 1960 version is okay, too. But 1909 is out of copyright. And that's the 1909 Reign of Alera. If you can learn Spanish, you'd be, you're be you really reading a language that compresses out all the English uh, mistakes. In other words, English is not structured like Greek. But Spanish is very similar to Greek in terms of uh, the way it categorizes uh, verbs and nouns and how they relate to one another. So there's a lot of commonality, and that leads to a more clear, clear I believe, clear translation. Also, Reina Valera was a man of great ethics, and he didn't. Uh, far, I've never found him corrupt anything, and he's superior in all his translations. I did a thorough, well, half half thorough study when I was living in Costa Rica, to be sure. And that's, I did a whole video on the Reign of Valera as the superior text in the modern uh, era, the post-Reformation era. That's just my opinion. And then another thing is uh, a lot of you will, are being told, read the Clementine homilies, but uh, I think you want to read it also from a top expert, and that's Alexander Roberts. 
And uh, let me see who's that. Roberts, yeah. And uh, Roberts was a famous commentator, and he is uh, going to tell you when he reads, he's, te- he's flat out going to tell you every time it says Simon Magus, it's Paul. We know it's Paul. It's just too obvious who the Clementines were talking about. And uh, and that's just gold, just to, to hear it from him. And he's a Pauline Christian. He doesn't want to believe it, but he's, he's honest. And when you have a Pauline Christian telling you if that's what it is, then you know it's reliable because you can't deny it. It's just contextually true. And then uh, there's another thing that's a note of introduction to the Clementine recognitions by Fenton Anthony. So you want to go in depth here. You can just see we have Clementine literature, all the links there. Just type in Clementine and you can find it. So you see there's a treasure trove. I mean, study of uh, these type of books from the past are is just indispensable sometimes to get grounding when I would say nowadays, I hate to tell you, it's so commercialized and so uh, there's no more inquiry in things. It's all settled. <laughs> no, it wasn't all settled. We have these different voices from the past who remind us of things that were forgotten and now are being forgotten. Is Vincent's statement about the celestial beings in Galatians 4, 9 rec- recorded and mem- rem- reminded to every time people read it and to understand the depths of which Paul attacked the Torah is not even written by God. It was written by angels, not just angels, but the weak and beggarly angels of all of them. So, I mean, that is just fundamentally a key fact. And there it is, debt buried in a book from the 1905. This is, these are precious gems that are, that are buried in the dirt in a sense, and we have to bring them out. So I hope that'll help you in this way. So let's continue looking at all the new things uh, that the, the new description will provide. Okay, so uh, this is what it'll look like when you go down to, you know, you go underneath the video and you come down here and it'll say our archive website. And it says we have an archive website and that's the link. And if you press that link, it'll take you there directly. And I add here, we are working on a new website to which we can make changes. So I'm not making any changes to this uh, JewsWordsOnly.org. That's not really my web page. John Hurt is... He's in charge of this, and he, he's being great. He's done all the work to make this restored to where it was when I got sick in 2020, and uh, I, I didn't. My credit card expired, and I didn't know that it had been changed for over six months, and I didn't update it. And it took away the web web uh, address and took away the website. It just uh, went nowhere, and uh, so. Uh, but that meant 15 years of hard work of collecting everything disappeared, and. And then some other gentleman, and I still appreciate what he did. He recovered part of it, but it turned out it was only about a very small percentage of what the whole thing was. And John, it, he's a great guy, and he know he loves the mission of Jews Words Only, Yeshua Words Only, and he uh, has devoted time uh, without compensation to do a lot of work to that we need to pray for him and his family because of all the generosity they've shown to us and keep him in our prayers. Uh, and, uh, so what do we have? We've got this treasure, but it's an archive. So I don't do any editing to it, but we're going to have, thanks to other people providing, um, payment so that we could, uh, and it went directly to Mr. Blake, this guy, Blake, he's done a great job of creating a, a new web page. I'm going to show that to you in a little bit. So let's take a look at the archive website. Uh, it's still very useful and, uh, it still can help. And John's actually taken all, a lot of the videos we've done here recently, the, the last year, and he's, he's linked them in there so you can actually find them. So you could do your study and work still in the, in the archive. And uh, before we get the other, uh, new website, the, the more active, modern looking website online. So let's take a look at how that would work. Okay, so you would land here. This is out looked uh, since 2005 to when it disappeared in, in 2020 or uh, late 2020, I think it was. And uh, there's always uh, a little saying that would pop up. It, and this one is William Paley. If Paul teaches faith alone, he is inconsistent with authority greater than his own. William Paley. See, 1825. William Paley was the one who created the watchmaker theory to prove the uh, design in nature is a reflection of our creator as it truly is. And uh, so you always have a, hopefully a educational uh, quote at, at any page you look here. So the pages flip and that should rotate out and change. But anyway, so this tells you the foundational message of Jesus words only. So this is my way of still speaking until we get the new web page up. Uh, 
uh, to people who are interested in knowing what is our mission. Our mission is to proclaim our Lord Jesus' lesson that he was our sole teacher, Matthew 23, 8 to 11, and sole pastor, John 10, verse 16. He sternly told the apostles they were not to call themselves or anyone else a teacher. In John, Jesus explained why when he insisted that the apostolos is not more important than the one who sent him, John 13, 16. And so on and so forth. So you you can share this web page to others who don't know what we're talking about. What what is the Jews' words only principle? That's it. Jesus is own words are what we follow and obey as Christians. And uh, we say he's the way, the truth, and the life, but we've made somebody else the way, the truth, and the life who isn't even anywhere similar to Jesus because we show you all these contradictions at this channel. Anyway, uh, so. Now, look at all these different things that you can go to. Now, I just want to show you that's home. Home brings you here. There's books. You can look up the, the book I wrote, Jesus Words Only, free, completely here. Just just click this. Just want to show you how that works. And you can read it here. Just uh, This is just an introduction to the book and get you interested to read it if you're not familiar with it. And then you go down here and you'll see all the information. Just don't even order this book. <laughs> Please do not order this book. Uh, unless, you know, of course, you need to buy it for a friend or something. Uh, here's each chapter free online. And here we go. So you go through each chapter and you can read it. And I, I was able to convert a couple of uh, the first three chapters into Spanish and so on. But anyway, uh, and so if you're interested, let's say, um, let's go, did Paul negate the laws for the replicability? Just click that. And then you get all that. And everything has active links everywhere. So when you give this to somebody, they they know they don't just have to trust what I'm saying. They can l literally click that link and they're going to be taken out to uh, usually Bible Gateway and they can verify everything that's there on the page. Okay, so uh, now what's interesting is John's done a very lot of work here uh, on top of everything else. Oh, one more thing. Let me just show you the topical index. This is how I personally go in when I'm trying to remember what I've said in the past. I just look it up based on uh, searching of this page. I hit F2 in my, my PC. I think it's Control, or excuse me, Command F in the Mac. And you just type in the words, you know, let's say uh, you want to look up Balaam, okay, and who was the adversary, and the lesson of Balaam, and so, more, so, much, so on. So you just, you know, hit, the, hit that search key on your computer, and you will find what you want here. Incidentally, if necessary, you got to go all the way down here. I'm sorry I did it this way. Hopefully, it'll be better in the future. But I did a scriptural index. So you got to go all the way at the bottom. And you'll see there's a scripture index, and you can look things up by scripture, which, by the way, takes a lot more time. And I really never got to finish it. But uh, that was the idea to get it completely done. And uh, let's, oh, here it is. Okay, there. Do you see here? It says alternative Bible verse index. Now click that. Now you can look it all up by reference to the Bible verse that you're interested in. Who is the greatest in the kingdom? Jesus told we must appease the anger of the one we sinned against before bringing atonement to God and the law applicable to the Gentiles. So whatever it is. And then uh, let me just show you. Let's go all the way down here. And then it's going to switch to the law and prophets. OK, so here we have the original Testament. I, I called it here. Uh, and then you have Genesis 3, 4, 15, 17. All these passages are here commented upon. And if you do want, want to have some help and some research, maybe I found something interesting that might help you. Uh, and uh, then I have some secondary sources here. And that's a, a, a way of doing uh, research using this page. Now I want to show you what John did, which I, I was very impressed here. He's actually taken our videos and gone, uh, done a fantastic job here. He's, he sorted them by category, by Bible verse, and date created. Amazing what he did. So let's take a look here, category. Here's what he did with the category. Uh, so he, these are categories. You want to look about apologetics, Bible studies, canon, canon, virgin birth, channel rules, channel history, creation, current events, Dead Sea Scrolls, dispensationalism. Let's just hit dispensationalism. Boom, I hit it. Look at what he did. He's put him, he sorted all these episodes in, under dispensationalism. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, this man is, is, uh, deserves a medal. <laughs> I, when I saw this, I was like, unbelievable. So uh, let's just try it out here. I'm just going to click a button, see what happens. See, it, it's going to come up on YouTube just like that. Now, I'm not going to play this commercial here, but uh, that's that's what John did. A, a, amazing work he did. What I want to also show you is uh, go back over to books. Uh, I showed you how to do look up Jesus words only, right? Same principle applies for the book I did on Jesus words on salvation. You don't need to go buy it. You can just read it here. Uh, unless you need to buy a book for somebody else. 
uh, Did Calvin Murder Servetus, a book that is everybody should read. I think it's uh, it'll give you a, a big, wide open idea of what was going on in the Reformation. It's not w what you think. Uh, it's not all wonderfulness, <laughs> okay? Uh, Servetus basically was a person who was killed for n believing that you couldn't call Jesus an eternal son because it's a contradiction. If he's a son, he can't be eternal. And Paul does say, in, in his view of even Paul, even Paul's own view is Jesus wasn't be, was begotten of God the Father in uh, Colossians 1.15, right? So he says, Jesus was the first begotten proto-tokos of all cre creation. So that can't, you can't get away from it. So that was uh, why he said, I refuse to say that Jesus is an eternal son. And because he wouldn't say that, he was executed at burned alive, which the Catholics never burned anyone, a heretic alive. They would kill him and then burn him. This guy was burned alive and they used the greenest wood so that it would take the longest time and torture him. And uh, yet he never gave in. He wouldn't say Jesus is the eternal son of God. And when he died, he he prayed a prayer. He said, oh, Father, oh, Heavenly Father, and the son of God uh, of the eternal one. And the Pharaoh wrote a letter later saying, if he had just moved the the adjective eternal in front of son, I, I could have accepted him. <laughs> but uh, we had to let him die. A medical doctor who made major discoveries on pulmonary function in the human body had to be killed because he wouldn't say Jesus is an eternal son of God. That's how debased, debased we became. Anyway, I digress. Then we have a thing about how not to study the Bible, the flaws of young earth science. All well-meaning, but I think the the argument in that book is correct of of uh, another author there jesus or paul okay that's just i guess what is that is that me oh okay yeah oh so i actually was starting a new book called jesus or, or paul and uh, i said hopefully it'll be produced in 21 2021 and i started over again and i tell the story of how my elder dis uh, dismissed Jesus' words to a different dispensation, and I shouldn't have to worry about Mark 9, 42 to 40, uh, Mark 9, verses 42 to 47. What did Jesus say there? Well, I said to the elder, I said, hey, elder, uh, Jesus says uh, a Christian who believes in him has only two choices when they sin. You have to either go to heaven maimed or hell whole. What, what happened to faith alone? What happened to justification by faith? This doesn't make sense. And he said, oh, that's that was for a different dispensation. That, that era of law is gone. That was his solution. I'm going, that that, that doesn't really wash with me. I You tell me to obey Jesus, but then you tell me I don't have to obey Jesus. It really, really, that's where it, it screwed my mind up. I'm like, how do I how do I reconcile these things? And that's kind of another one of the, the key moments in my path to the position of Jesus' words only, just so you know. So that's why I wanted to do a whole new book about that. And uh, so that's what that is. I forgot I put done that. Uh, okay, but the uh, other book I wanted to let you know is there's the original Gospel of Matthew, and that's a very useful thing to learn about Stanford Rise uh, work here, original Gospel of Matthew. So this is a treasure where the recovery of the original text of Hebrew Gospel of Matthew is done by methodically looking through all the works that ever mentioned the Hebrew Gospel of Matthew and any quote from it, and then putting it in, in inside of our current American Standard Version. That's a public domain version of the New Testament. And that uh, is then put together and merged so you can see and it's highlighted in different colors so that you can code and know where it came from and so on let me see something okay and so under volume three on that page where you land is uh, the final reconstruction to use for your devotion so for devotional reading just to appreciate it as as a work of the original church uh you click there and now you scroll down the final document and the color codes are missing in this version this is this recovered uh, website will have to be uh, done over inside the new website, but you can see here, this is how it originally looks, and I mean, it's now all synthesized into one thing. So this will help you appreciate uh, the changes are, I think sometimes just interesting or. Uh, more concrete and uh, you can just tell someone that took this text and translated it and sometimes they weren't sure of the words and they would just kind of smooth over and kind of gloss over and remove things that I, you'll find it's very interesting and edifying at the same time so you can just read the whole thing here and that's why i wanted to bring it up to everybody um okay so i'm going to show you preview of the new website that's coming out 
All right, so this is what the landing page is going to look like. This is Blake's invention. I did nothing. He he's going to get the. I love the uh, the fact that you have telephone poles in the left side, yet you have this uh, man from the in dressed in a different garb. But anyway, it just shows you that Jesus is relevant for all times. It doesn't matter what technologies happen. Reviving the focus on Jesus' words alone. And then he's going to have our mission statement, our featured articles, our featured books, our questions, recommendations, sending a message. And it's all computerized now, so it'll be really good. Uh, and then uh, he has the further reading tab, uh, the recommended reading. So it's all here, similar to what, uh, how it used to be, famous thinkers and so on, famous rebuttals. Uh, let's see what else we have here. The media, we have to work on that. I think that's still on, in process. Uh, the the uh, Let's take a look here. Uh, topic index, there's nothing there. So you see it's still in work, work in process, and, uh, and that's it. So we're still, it's getting there. Not yet, yet not, not ready for prime time yet, but hopefully it'll be very good. All right, uh, but I think you can see that John's actually gotten a web page or, or website working that is uh, functioning in a really high level where you can look at all the videos that we're doing here. And uh, and over time, he's going to transition where I could get more involved in that and I can try to maybe maintain both sites simultaneously. Uh, again, I think in the modern era, that old site, you can just see it sort of has lost its gloss, right? It's just a very uh, uh, mundane looking site. People like to see something a little more exciting like this page. Uh, and I think it'll uh, be uh, a blessing to those people who, who are attracted to it and then will uh, follow through and enjoy the content. All right. God bless everybody. Hope that helps uh, everybody see the new changes that are coming. And you'll see that in the description see each, uh, each video. All right. God bless. Take care. Ciao. Bye.